Today, I'm going to share with you how to build a strong network marketing team in the least frustrating way. It's actually the way that I used to build a team that helped me become the number one income earner in that network marketing company. The three main things I'm going to cover in this video are the number one action step that you need to be taking to build your team and how to handle your new rep and help them in the most powerful way. And then we're going to talk about how to have the best retention so that you're gaining people and they're staying. The best thing that you can do for your team is build a new one. Now that doesn't mean ignore the existing. Doesn't mean that all of a sudden they're lesser than. No, it means do the things you wish they were doing. So the best thing that they can see is for you to keep going out there and recruit, for you to bring in new customers, for you to keep recruiting. Nothing is better for your team than you to be welcoming new people to the group that they've never met or have ever heard of. And so keep going, keep recruiting. And let me tell you a quick story around this. So I joined a company after losing it all in real estate. I was dead broke, in personal foreclosure, my credit was shot, everything, just sucked at the time. No one was hiring and it was really, really tough times. And I got serious and joined a network marketing company and I started running. I started recruiting. I started putting people into the organization. And here's the reality. After four months, hardly anyone had done anything. And I'm like, geez, like no one's doing anything. But I just kept going because I'd, I'd been given this advice. I had been told, hey, keep recruiting, don't stop. Even if the team isn't doing anything, keep going. And so at the end of month four, I had a guy that saw one of my YouTube videos and he reached out to me. And I didn't know it at the time, but he would go on to become my number one income earner. My best earner in my team came from a YouTube video. And so that was awesome. That was, you know, that's just like what people had told me is to keep recruiting. You never know when you're gonna find your next leader. But what happened next really surprised me. That first initial team that I had built prior to getting him on board, which hadn't done anything in like four months. All of a sudden, they started doing things. They started stepping up. They started showing up differently. If you fast forward a few years, I actually had multiple people that came in during that first four months that went on to become six-figure earners. Now, I never would have guessed that unless I kept recruiting and kept going. You need to too. So how do you start a new rep? Well, I can tell you what not to do. Don't overload them. I audit team groups and I audit fast start processes or what they call fast start processes. And if you recruit someone into your organization and the first thing you do is send them a page with 450 links that's 38 pages long and is a humongous amount of information for them, you're blowing them out of the water before they even start. So it has to be simple. What is the simple steps that they can take that will help them build their business? So keep it simple. Talk about the system. They don't have to know every single ingredient. They don't have to be on every single training. They don't have to join 52 different groups because there's 52 different teams in your company. They don't have to do half of the stuff that most leaders send their people. Instead, you have to keep it really simple. What is it that they can do that if followed will help them create success? What's the bare minimum? And there's a, there's a great book out there. It's actually not about network marketing, but there's a line in it that every network marketer should embrace. And that book is called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber, he wrote this book and he talks about the McDonald's franchise and why the McDonald's franchise pretty much always succeeds. And he says, it was created to be ran by the person with the lowest level of skill. So look at your fast start process. Does it assume anything? Does it assume that they're a, an amazing academic person? Does it assume that they have support of friends and family? Does it assume that they have a sales background or that they have a big social media following and they're an influencer? Well, whatever those assumptions are, you need to eradicate because there are gonna be people coming to your organization that don't have warm market that you know friends and family that support them they don't have a good background in education or business or sales you too need to create processes that the person with the lowest level of skill can execute so before i get to what i consider the most important part which is around retention 
drop a like, and be sure to subscribe. So let me share with you a concept that is going to radically change how you view building an organization. And it's called the Thompson Rule. I learned it from a friend of mine, Larry Thompson. And it's 80, 15, and 5. This breaks down the level of desire in any network marketing organization. 80% of your organization are in your organization to make between zero and $500 a month. Why zero? Like why would anyone be in your organization to make zero? They're there to make friends. They're there to be part of the mission. They're there because they love the product. They love just being part of something like a book club or a dart league, right? They're there because they just like to be part of something. Maybe it's an escape. Maybe it's an escape from the, you know, overbearing husband or the crazy kids or the, you know, job that they don't like. Maybe it's an escape. Doesn't matter. You don't need to know the reason, but 80% of your organization has a level of desire of zero to $500 a month. 15% have a level of desire of two to $3,000 a month. They hit that, they're good to go. That's where they're at. They, they may not be comfortable going above it, but they want to make two to $3,000 a month. Only 5% of your organization, and this is true of any organization I've ever looked at over the last 10 years, 5% of your organization wants to make over $30,000 a month. Now they may want to make 300,000 a month or a million a month. I have a client right now that makes over a million dollars take home per month. So it's possible, right? The big problem here is that who are all the trainers in your company? Five percenters. And that's fine. And they deserve that. They earn that. The problem is the relatability and how they think about the rest of the people in the organization. An analogy is, is the best thing to use here. I want you to think about the gym owner. The gym owner is an expert on this rule. If I go into the gym, any gym, pick any gym in the world. If I go to the gym and I go in there, I got my, I got my sweatband, got my Beats by Dre headphones on, and, and I go and I get on the treadmill for four minutes and I you know, wipe, you know, I take a selfie for Instagram, of course, and then I go to leave the gym. What does the gym owner say? Now, I've only been there four minutes. Does the gym owner say, hey, hey, you didn't do any deadlifts. Get over there, boy. Let's see you step it up. Or do they say, hey, way to kill it, buddy. Way to go. You, you, you did it. Way to go, bud. Yeah, the latter. Why? Because that gym owner likes my auto ship. I mean, membership. I get those confused sometimes. Now, what if I went to that same gym owner and I said, hey, man, you know, I really want to get serious about this. I want to get diesel. I want to get ripped. I want to get six-pack abs. I want to really crush it. Well, what would that gym owner do? They would point, guide, and direct me to different resources. They would say, well, we have, you know, CrossFit and you can flip tires and, you know, or we got a personal trainer over there. We got racquetball there, get in shape. And they, maybe they give me a, a routine. And so they base their level of instruction on my level of desire. That's a good network marketer. So a good network marketer doesn't try to cram their goals down everyone's throat. They're, they're just simply aware that people have different levels of desire. Now, I broke this rule the entire first period of my network marketing career. I would get on the, the, you know, the team call and say, if you're not prospecting 10 people a day, what's wrong with you? You know what? My five percenters loved it. They're like, oh man, yeah, man, you tell them, bro. But a lot of people, they felt like a disappointment. They felt like, oh, I'm not meeting his expectations. I hate to disappointment disappoint him. So let me just get out of here. And so I saw people leave and I'm like, where, where'd they go? They were just here. Right. But no one likes to be made to feel like a disappointment. And this is true of parenting as well. By the way, if you want all of your kids to be doctors or, or lawyers, well, you may want to check their level of desire if you want a healthy relationship with them. Doesn't that make sense? And so your level of desire doesn't mean it's their level of desire. And so understand that you can be tough on people, once you know their level of desire. So in group, when you're addressing your entire team, know the math, 80, 15, and five, and speak as if you understand that. And people can always reach out to you if they wanna step it up, if they're a five percenter, but you're not gonna turn away the 80% of your income, which are the people that don't have a high level of desire. So the 80, 15, and five rule, Thompson rule, is really how we define culture. Culture is the making of people to feel good regardless of their level of desire or level of result. Now I'm going to repeat to you, 80, 15, and 5 is level of desire, 
not level of results. Here's the reality. You need to understand that because there are people that are making 5% or kind of income, but they're not actively recruiting or prospecting. They're not actively doing anything. Their level of desire based on their personal attempts at production is actually that of an 80 percenter. And so know that it is not level of results. It's level of desire. You can have someone that isn't making any money at all, but they're really hungry. They're sending a hundred messages a day. They're showing up to every training. They got their vision board out and they're really, really focused and they would have a 5% or level of desire. And so again, it's levels of desire, not levels of results. Now, if you're serious about building a strong network marketing team and you really want to take your leadership to the next level, I'd encourage you to check out our book. It's called Freakishly Effective Leadership and Network Marketing. It has helped thousands and thousands of leaders build strong organizations all around the world and all different kinds of products and services. And so feel free to grab it. We'll have the link in the description. Click it, go check out, read the reviews before you get it. And I think you'll really love it.